Man, comic fans have been eating good. And Invincible season two came to play in a hard way. Hey, yo, I just finished watching episode one of season two of Invincible and we get to talk about it. Quick warning that I am gonna be recapping the entire episode and give you my honest spoiler filled thoughts of the episode. So if you're not trying to be spoiled, make sure you drop a like, follow, but come back later because I need to hear your thoughts. So off rip, Mark is fighting the immortal and they're showing each other that their hands are rated E for everyone. Anyone can get it. Like a nice Dragon Ball Z style fight, immortal throat grabs Mark, hey, yo. But when Omni-Man shows up, you already know some crazy shit about to happen. And I cannot show it because this man, Omni-Man, rips off Immortal's arm, fucking does like a karate chop move and slices this man's head off. Like, it was crazy. But not as crazy as when it's revealed that Mark is working with his dad now and they've enslaved Earth for the Viltrum Empire. And I know I wasn't the only one that was sitting there like, did I miss something? Anyway, we're introduced to Angstrom Levy, who's this guy with the backpack right here, and what's left of the Guardians of the Globe and the resistance that's standing up against the Gory Graysons, including Adam Eve with a new haircut. Let's just say it doesn't end well for a lot of these Guardians of the Globe, but Angstrom Levy leaves through a portal and this is revealed to be an alternate timeline one where Mark ended up joining his dad. We cut back to our current timeline, picking up four months after the events of season one. Mark is doing his thing, still reeling from the loss of his father. I mean, the physical loss and the emotional loss. I mean, he's still out there. But he's doing his thing as Invincible. He's putting out fire, tossing this rhino wannabe around. But what happened in Chicago still haunts Mark and his mom, as they're still struggling to pick up the pieces that Omni-Man left. Meanwhile, the Mahler twins are just trying to get some good grub in their holding cell. The portal appears and they're transported to this barren wasteland, where they get introduced to Angstrom Levy. He reveals he has the ability to open portals to different dimensions, and he needs their help but he's a good person oh yeah and if they don't help he's just gonna leave him in this weird dimension back at school mark has to act like he just lost his dad i mean shit even that dickhead todd gave him a hug but mark isn't really feeling this like he still feels guilty the fact that he's getting this pity but he feels like he could have done more to try to stop his dad mark meets with cecil because he wants to help the guardians of the globe and be a hero but cecil refuses telling mark he's still emotionally unstable but the real reason is revealed that cecil doesn't trust him yet he still thinks he could eventually end up being like his dad who fucking screwed him over meanwhile we get a cool action sequence of the guardians of the globe fighting a baby giant big dumbass baby he's just like me for real they stopped the giant baby but a lot of collateral damage is caused meanwhile angstrom levy reveals to the Mahler twins what he wants them to help build but first he introduces the Mahler twins to all of his various variants who are helping him out right now they all live in this safe house that he's working with but what he wants the Mahler twins to build is a machine that allows him to combine his minds throughout the entire multiverse to become one type of nexus being so he can bring stability across the multiverse in exchange for the Maulers being put on an earth where they rule the world or whatever we actually get a really nice moment with two widows where debbie grayson really just gets to let her emotions loose. She was like, damn, Omni-Man really just saw me as a pet. But all while Cecil is pissed off that the Guardians of the Globe caused a lot of collateral damage. So guess what? We're going to add some new members to that team, the Immortal and Bulletproof, who has a pissing contest with Rex. Mark and Adam have a nice heart-to-heart -heart where he basically talks about all of his daddy issues and she encourages him to work for the Guardians of the Globe. It's up to Cecil and says he wants to join the GDA and it couldn't have come because Angstrom Levy and the twins finished building their machine, but not on Invincibles, watch. Angstrom gets a bunch of Mahler twin variants to fight Mark, but this man is just toying with them. I'm talking, he's beating some ass. He's beating ass upside down. That's how hard he's beating ass. Mark at one point does get overwhelmed with the amount of variants that are beating the shit out of him, and Angstrom Levy's like, no, nah, I'm not gonna build my empire on blood, so he starts to take his fucking helmet off, which is a big no-no, and boom goes the dynamite, or should I say the entire building they were just in, and everyone in it, except for Mark, who is... What do you mean we don't have the budget to do that? The Guardians of the Globe show up, but Mark still feels like he did in Chicago where he couldn't save anyone. He heads home where he gets some nice TLC from his mom and finds out that him and Amber are going to the same college. When he gets a visit from the Immortal who says he still doesn't trust him because his daddy was untrustworthable. Viltrumite. Then we cut back to the remains of the exploded Levy hideout, and Angstrom Levy ain't looking too good. Wipe yourself off, man. You got a lot of blood. Ugh. But it's here that he swears that he'll get his revenge on Invincible. We finally get the damn title card. I swear to God, they catfished us like six or seven times throughout the episode. I was like, they're gonna do it now. No, they're gonna do it now. But we finally got it at the end. Oh yeah, and one of the Mauler twins is all right, except half of his body is mauled. All in all, I thought this was a great first episode to reintroduce us to the world of Invincible, letting us know that the multiverse is gonna play a huge factor. Praying we get Spider-Man. We're back to that bloody R-rated MA animation. Oh yeah, by the way, the animation itself incredible and the voice actors <laughs> invincible is peak but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and as always like and follow for more